wants to feed you in this town. Crazy if you're going hungry in the city. In the city. Somebody will feed you three, four, five meals a day. You try to find some place to use the restroom or take a shower. No, no. That's the real struggle. So anyway, I'm sure there's probably more I have to say, but I'm going to leave it there for now and yield the next 15 seconds to Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Marina Centron. I'm here representing the Westside Impact Coalition. We're a group of concerned community members and public health professionals. I'm here today to express our strong concern that there are currently over 7,800 businesses that sell alcohol operating in the city of Los Angeles alone. And that doesn't um, include the 1,000 new license applications that are being processed right now. We cannot allow more alcohol in our neighborhoods unless there are significant protections for public health and safety. The Alcohol Restricted Use Subdistrict Motion, also known as RS, file 170117, which is pro-community and would protect our neighborhoods from over-concentration and more alcohol businesses in sensitive areas, is being ignored. There are 300 letters and signatures from all over LA, including dozens of petitions signed by youth that are sitting in our council file in support of RS, and this committee won't agendize it. Today, I call on you, the Plum Committee, to stop ignoring the public support for the RS motion. This committee focused too often on proposed ordinances that are without strong standards for how, when, and where alcohol is sold. So why not agendize a motion that protects the health and safety of our communities that you represent? A policy such as this that protects our neighborhoods should be taken seriously, not just policies that are good for business. I urge you to agendize RS today. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Raul Verdugo, and I'm speaking as a member of the Los Angeles Drug and Alcohol Policy Alliance. I'd like to ask the committee to set the RS motion uh, file number 17-0117 to its agenda. The RS motion is an important step in the effort to reestablish our community's wellness and safety. District 9 currently has 238 active licenses serving and or selling alcohol, with the highest concentration of all sale licenses located in the South Central Los Angeles area. I'm asking the Plum Committee Chair to consider the importance of our motion and set it to the agenda. Thank you. All right, I think this concludes our general public comment speakers. Uh, so general public comment is uh, closed. Uh, Mr. Mejia, if you could read item number two into the record. Sprouts Market, located in CD 10. Excellent, and uh, we have a the applicant here, Ms. Dickerhoff, to speak. Given a total of uh, five minutes, Good but you are not required to use all of it. I said you're not required to use all five minutes, but you have five minutes no. to speak. Uh, good afternoon. I'm just here to answer any questions or concerns if you have any. Excellent. So uh, on item number two, there are no public comment cards. Uh, if there are no comments uh, from the members, we will uh, approve that item yes. and move to item number three. Item three, Councilman, this is an appeal filed by Chris Parker, who's the project applicant, and he's appealing the decision of um, the West LA APC, which overturned the directors of planning approval of um, the coastal map and the coastal permit and the track map. All right, I believe we have staff on this item. Yes, no? Don't be shy. Good afternoon, Julieta with City Planning. Uh, the applicant did re uh, submit a letter to extend time for the, the committee to act, and it's in the, the council file. 
Excellent. Thank you. So we'll continue this item to January 15th, 2019. All right, item number four, Mr. Mejia. So to be clear on item three, what was the disposition? We continue to January 15th, 2019. January 19th? Oh. January 15th, 2019. Okay. And then the next 0115-2019. Thank you, Councilman. Next item is item four? Yes. Okay, item four, Councilman. Uh, this is an appeal filed by the Coalition to Preserve LA. Uh, Michael Say is the attorney. Uh, he's appealing the uh, approval of the track map uh, for, in Council District, District 13. And item five, Councilman, is interrelated. Uh, it's the general plan amendment and the resolution. Those are not being appealed, but the same appellant as in number four is appealing the three land use entitlements, the conditional use, parking reduction and the site plan review. All right, and uh, also could you read item number five as well? I did. You did? Okay, you got them together. Thank you. All right, well, folks, is it hard to hear me or Mr. Mejia? Mr. Mejia, so you got to get your I, I will correct that. mic a little closer. All right. Yes. Good afternoon, this is Nuri Cho with City Planning. The project before you is for the development of 299 residential units, 46,110 square feet of commercial space, and an 18,962 square foot public park at the northeast intersection of Gordon Street and Sunset Boulevard. The proposed building is a 22-story structure consisting of an 18-floor residential tower above a four-level above-grade podium structure containing approximately 325,000 square feet of floor area and 508 parking spaces within three levels of subterranean parking and three levels of above-grade parking. The development is currently existing and no additional construction would be required for the proposed project. A slightly larger version of this project was previously approved in 2008 by the City Council and subsequently constructed and uh, substantially completed in 2014. However, in 2015, after a series of legal challenges, the building and public park were closed due to an order to vacate issued by the Department of Building and Safety. The building and park have remained vacant and closed since then. The applicant is now seeking to re-entitle the completed building and the public park so that all necessary permits can be considered for issuance by the city. On August 9, 2018, the City Planning Commission considered the proposed project in conjunction with an appeal of the related vesting tentative tract map to permit one master lot and one airspace lot in conjunction with the limited dedication and merger of Gordon Street below grade. At this meeting, the City Planning Commission denied the appeal of the tract map, approved the CPC case, and adopted the supplemental EIR for the proposed project. Please be advised that the original project approved by the City Planning Commission consisted of 299 residential units, including 269 market rate, 15 units for very low income, and 15 workforce housing units. However, on December 7th of 2018, the applicant updated the proposal to increase the amount of affordable housing units by providing 15 additional units at the moderate income level. In total, the project consists of 299 units, including 254 market rate, 15 very low income, 15 moderate, and 15 workforce housing units. A second level appeal of the tract map and appeals of the related CPC case were filed by the same appellant as the first level tract appeal. All appeal points largely repeat the same concerns that were submitted in response to the draft supplemental EIR, final supplemental EIR, and the first level tract map appeal. Detailed staff responses to the appeals are included in the appeal report dated August 9th, 2018 and appeal response letter dated December 6, 2018, which have been transmitted to the council file for your consideration. 
If Plum Committee would like a brief summary of the appeal points and responses, I'm happy to go over them. Also, for the record, staff would like to clarify that the first three transmittals from the planning department, dated November 1st, November 2nd, and November 5th, largely contained the same information, except that the November 5th transmittal has the correct case number and includes revised Exhibit A as an enclosure. Based on all of these information, staff recommends that the Plum Committee deny the appeals and sustain the original determinations by the City Planning Commission in conjunction with the technical corrections that were introduced into the record and including the 15 additional units set aside for moderate income households as volunteered by the applicant. That concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, questions or comments, colleagues? Hearing none, I'll go to uh, public comment on this. We've got a number of speakers. Uh, so I know many people have signed up on four and five, uh, so you should take those together as we're considering those together. And so I'll just go down the list. JQ. Council member, Adrian Corsani, City Attorney's Office. Um, would you like to hear from the appellant and the um, applicant first or take public comment first? Let's hear from the appellant and the applicant okay. first. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. You're on. Thank you. Chairman Harris Dawson, fellow council members, thank you for your time today. My name is Mitchell Tsai. I'm here on behalf of Coalition to Preserve LA. Um, I think to set the context for this case, I think it's important to note that the reason that this very item here is before you before is because the original developer for this project violated um, a significant condition that was placed on their conditions of approval, which was to protect the old spaghetti factory historical facade that was at the front of, the, front of this particular building. Um, I think it's also, it's important to, and so as a result, a court struck down the original building permits and required that the, this project go back before the city council for, for approval. Well, one of the main important points that I want to talk to you about today is that is the fact that the need for afford affordable housing here in the city, in particular very low income housing or housing for below median income residents, which, which according to the 2014 to 2021 regional housing needs assessment comprised about 40.2% of the city's population. Now, that 2014 to 2021 housing regional needs assessment also says that new housing stock in the city needs to be built at approximately 12.5% very low income in order to meet the future needs of the city. This project is only proposing 5% very low income housing and only proposes 5% overall for any below median income, below medium income, um, cat, below medium income categories. Now, I know the developer is going to point, come to you and say, well, we provide additional 5% for workforce housing, additional 5% for moderate income housing, but those particular projects concern, um, those particular categories are for above median categories when clearly the need in the city is for below medium, is for housing for below median income categories. In addition, there's a, I, I wanted to bring up, bring up, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues that our appeal brings up, but, but I wanted to focus the council members time on the traffic analysis for this particular project. In particular, there's a significant discrepancy with regard to the neighborhood street segment analysis with this project, which analyzes the amount of project traffic that this project will generate that will cut through local neighborhood streets. Now it admits almost uh, ha more than half of the amount of, pro in this particular analysis, it's environmental impact report, it admits more than half of the amount of traffic that will be generated by this project by only considering commercial traffic. Now, the city and LA Department of Transportation has taken the position that the city is only required to analyze the commercial traffic for this project, hence their emission of almost half of the overall traffic for this mixed-use project that involves both residential and commercial components. However, this flies in the face of previous LADOT procedures and policies. While LADOT released a letter that stated that their interpretation of their policy was to include only commercial for purposes of this project, previous projects back in 2006, 
as well as most recently in 2016 that required neighborhood street segment analysis, LADOT did in fact require that the entirety of the project be included with part of this neighborhood street segment analysis. Now, um, Coalition Preserve LA submitted comments from an expert that indicated that this project will have significant impacts on the, on the local residential streets that are surrounding this project and that additional mitigation may be required as a result. Um, with that, I'd like to, and finally, I'd like to point out a small, te small technical discrepancy with the agenda. This, the agenda item should, th this item should be continued and uh, modified because the fact that this agenda, the agenda items fail to take into account the December 7th modifications to this project, which did add 15 moderate income units. Council members, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, and now we have a representative from Coalition to Preserve LA. Uh, I believe, I believe uh, Chair Harris Dawson, that the previous speaker was Coalition to Preserve LA. Uh, I'm DJ Moore of Latham and Watkins on behalf of the applicant 5929 Sunset LLC. Okay. All right. Uh, we're here today regarding the Sunset and Gordon project, which involves very minor modifications to the previously approved and built project at the corner of Sunset and Gordon in Hollywood, which I'm sure uh, you all have probably seen or driven by at some point over the past several years. We're here at the culmination of a very long and thorough process that included extremely detailed land use and environmental review, including a full supplemental EIR in order to re-entitle this built project. Our goal has been to ensure that the built project and public park, which have been sitting closed and vacant for three years, can reopen to the public and provide needed housing and open space in the Hollywood community. I'm also pleased to report that following the Planning Commission's unanimous approval and recommendation of approval, the applicant worked closely with the council office and the community and agreed to provide additional below market rate units in this project, bringing the total to 45 units that will be available right here in the heart of Hollywood, divided equally between lo very low, moderate, and workforce income levels. That's in comparison to the built project, which had no affordable units at all. To give you a little background, I know staff mentioned it briefly, the project was approved by the city back in 2008. After it was approved, litigation challenges were filed. The original EIR was ultimately upheld, but due to the downturn in the national economy, prior developer went into bankruptcy. Uh, beginning in 2012, the current applicant, who bought it out of receivership, obtained demolition and building permits for the project, uh, in, which included the old spaghetti factory building, which was located on site and was identified in conditions to be maintained, even though it wasn't designated as a historic resource. Construction was substantially completed in September of 2014, and a temporary certificate of occupancy was obtained. However, administrative appeals were filed. A lawsuit was filed for violation of a Q condition, uh, and ultimately the LA Superior Court voided the previously issued permits and ordered, the, and the park and building were ultimately closed. Now, the project before you today is just the re-entitlement of that project. Uh, only minor construction is involved, and as I mentioned, it has undergone a robust review. The only remaining significant impact is a construction noise impact. It's exactly the same as the prior project. The project would have less than significant impacts in all other areas. Uh, as I mentioned, in addition to the 45 avail affordable housing units, uh, there are a number of additional benefits that these, this project has beyond those of the built building. EV ready parking in 20% of the parking spaces, 400, over 400 bicycle parking spaces, bus and traffic flow improvements, a brand new traffic demand management program, designated ride share for Uber and Lyft on Sunset, and of course the reopening of the over 19,000 square foot public park. Uh, despite these benefits, the Coalition to Preserve LA and AIDS Healthcare, as you just heard, have objected to the project and have filed an appeal of the Planning Commission's unanimous decision. As your staff noted, the appeal primarily repeats comments that have already been fully addressed in the record and in the supplemental EIR. None of them have any merit. Regarding traffic, the modified project will not result in any significant traffic impacts with mitigation. DOT has reviewed every single traffic analysis in the record, including the neighborhood intrusion analysis, and confirmed that what's in the EIR is absolutely correct. Moreover, the Sunset and Vine intersection uh, with mitigation is less than significant, and there is actually no mitigation required if you use the latest 
traffic, method, traffic in, impact methodology that came out after the EIR was published. We're still going to implement the mitigation. DOT is still requiring the mitigation. This is extremely conservative. It's as conservative as you can get. With respect to housing, the supplemental EIR confirmed there will be no housing or population impact. In fact, as you've heard, the modified project is resulting in a substantial increase in affordable housing as compared to what was built and approved, which the city previously concluded would not result in a significant impact. Uh, we appreciate your consideration of all of our requests. We fully support the staff report, staff recommendation, and staff's response to the appeal points, and we respectfully request that you deny the coalition's appeal approve the requested entitlements for the modified project that include a general plan amendment and zone change, and certify the supplemental EIR, adopt the findings, statement of overriding considerations, and mitigation monitoring program. We thank you for your time, and if you have any technical questions, the technical team, the EIR team, is here to answer them. Uh, we appreciate your time, and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have a representative from Council District 13? Good afternoon, my name is Craig Bullock and I'm with Council Member Mitch O'Farrell's office. The Council Member supports the entitlement request and denial of the appeal that's before you today. The development will be beneficial to Hollywood and to the city at large. The project previously approved on this site included no affordable housing units. This project before you today will include 45 units representing 15% of the total units this picture of affordability will provide housing to individuals of varying incomes. The approval of this project will also allow for the completion of a 38,000 square foot office space, which is so, which we are very thankful is needed in Hollywood. This will also, approval of this project will also create the activation of the ground floor retail space that is shuttered since the building's closing along Sunset Boulevard. This development is beneficial to Hollywood, to the city of Los Angeles. It creates housing, especially affordable housing, and it creates space for good paying jobs. I would also like to thank, on behalf of Councilman O'Farrell, I would like to thank the staff of the um, planning department and the city attorney, as well as the applicant and their team. Their willingness to provide the additional affordable units requested by this office is deeply appreciated and very much needed in Hollywood. Thank you. All right, we have a number of uh, public comment cards on this. We'll uh, thank folks who have spoken so far. Uh, JQ, uh, Jacob Jerugai, Ravon McGee, Alfredo Hernandez, Brian Fulb. Come on up if I've called you, you don't have to go in order. Um, commissioners, or sorry, excuse me, council members. Uh, my name is Jacob Houdigan on behalf of the uh, Hollywood Chamber of Commerce and more than 800 members it represents. I am here to reaffirm our support for the Sunset Gordon project. This building has been sitting completed and empty for nearly four years. It will provide much needed office and retail spaces that will continue to activate the section of Sunset Boulevard, which is transitioning toward becoming an important creative office hub. Of equal importance is the housing that this uh, transit-oriented project would provide for professionals employed in these offices and nearby workspaces, reducing the number of vehicles on the road and alleviating traffic in the vicinity. With two metro stations within walking distance, residents are further disincentivized from owning a vehicle. The Chamber recognizes the need for increased housing stock and supports the effort of this developer to provide affordable housing units. This project also features a publicly accessible po um, pocket park, which would be a huge benefit to a community that has been historically underserved by parks. In fact, this pocket park, which has been closed for several years, is the only park or open space within a half mile radius. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Alfredo Hernandez, chair of the Urban Policy Committee for the Hollywood Network Coalition, a broad-based coalition of residents, business owners, and nonprofits. The HNC met with the developers representatives and we're happy that they have voluntarily increased the amount of below market housing numbers as we requested up to a total of 45 from the original 15 that was proposed. We're excited about the more than 
7,600 square feet of re retail space and more than 3,800 square feet of office space that this project is going to be providing. After sitting vacant for so many years during the worst housing crisis the city has ever seen, these 299 new homes could begin functioning almost immediately. The agency hopes that you join us in supporting this proposal that will bring these much needed homes back online. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Brian Fold. My family owns a number of office buildings in Hollywood and other properties uh, in the Hollywood community. Uh, we've been involved in Hollywood for over 50 years. Uh, I myself have been living and working in the area for over 50 years. Uh, the voters have spoken, we need housing. And those units have been sitting there vacant for several years. Um, we need all housing. And this is a project that, uh, that needs to be approved. Let's get some folks uh, into the units and, and fill it up. We have a tremendous demand. Um, it's time to get it done. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mickey Jackson, William Maud, Sean Brown, Ricky Wasp, Angelino Quintero. Mickey Jackson with CPLA. I'm a little confused because you had called the attorney and the applicant earlier, but I kind of got there. Um, this started with an illegal demolition. It continued to opening that shouldn't have been open, and there was a lot of mess involved in that that was kind of just, we didn't talk about that either. Um, our attorney made the very good point that below market is not below medium, and 41% of our population needs housing. That's the group that needs the housing, not the well-to-do. The well-to-do are doing great. Um, we have an overcrowded freeway entrance, and at a time when we need housing so much, I really wish we would have considered this as a possibility for housing for low-income people. You know, in New York, they require 30%. That's standard right off the top, 30%. And we're jumping up and down over 15. And I also think this should be delayed because of the reason Mr. Sai gave. Thank you. Hi, my name is William Mudd. Uh, I approve it as a project. We have a housing cri crisis. Uh, I need to get a spot there too. I approve it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sean Brown. I'm a carpenter. And I approve of this project because I plan on moving out next year and it would be nice to actually have affordable housing and as well would help with getting some of the homeless off the street. Uh, my name is Angelina Quintero. I am a community member at um, Hollywood. I have been there for over 15 years. I can't stress the need of the parks. I am a single mother of a son who has autism, who clearly needs the exercise and needs the um, compatibility with other kids. Uh, there is no parks within walking distance of where we reside at, which um, prevents a lot of um, community ties with other family members. I cannot stress the need of affordable housing because it is important for the economy, not only for the economy, but for the community. Low income housing can attract and retain employees. It can also um, be a selling point for most uh, places and communities will offer employment to affordable, uh, offer employment to low income housing people so then we can afford the affordable housing. Um, thank you very much for your time and your patience and have a blessed evening. How you doing? My name is Ricky Wasp. I'm 63 and a half years old. I'm retired. And when I found out about this place sitting here all of this time vacant and then looking at what's going on with housing, I'm just hoping that you guys would consider everything that's being said here today and just make it happen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Raven McGee. Uh, I approve of, of this uh, housing crisis. Uh, we need the houses, we need the, uh, the parking. Uh, you have to look at it like, uh, what if it was you? Thank you, have a great day. Hi, my name is uh, Rich Wasp, and I literally just came from a project that we do on Fifth and Town, being homeless. And just as a heads up, it's not just people who are junkies and drug addicts who are homeless. 
there's working class people as well. You know, you would you'd be surprised how many single mothers I see with their kids pass through the, the line. So we actually do really need these projects approved. So if you guys can find it in your hearts, please approve these projects. Thank you. Well said. Roxanne William Maud, I think you already spoke, Mr. Maud. Your name is in here twice. Uh, La Bumba Jackson, Kelly Stagg, Hector Barbosa, Tom Q. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Roxanne Spate. I'm in favor of this project. The project is already there. For over 10 years, I've worked in Hollywood in affordable housing. Would I love to see 100% affordable housing like where I came from? Absolutely. This is not the case. The building is already there. The park is already built. I wish the people that are making sure you dot your I's and cross your T's would spend as much time uh, making sure that affordable units are built. But even when I worked for affordable projects with Hollywood Community Housing, some of these same people opposed those projects and found reasons for them not to be built. As far as traffic, anyone who's been to Hollywood know there's going to be traffic. They have made this a uh, place that's close to metro lines. They have made Uber and Lyft uh, spots available. They've made bicycle tracks available. So at the end of the day, the building is there. We talk about housing stock. Great, but it's not 100% affordable. I'm sorry. The weight has been great because it has increased the number of units that are below market value. I'm sorry it's not low enough, but it's already there. Thank you. Thank you. My name is LaBamba Jackson. Um, actually, I live in the community, not far walking distance from that building. And originally being from Portland, Oregon, been here about six or seven years, to actually be able to have some sort of green space in the Hollywood area, being offered a park with affordable housing in a unit that's already there, that's already ready for people to move into, I think this should be approved. Yes. Good afternoon, my name is Pastor Kelly Stagg and I reside in West Hollywood, California. And I need to let you know that I was absolutely devastated when I heard about um, this building not having anyone reside there just yet. And I was actually sharing this experience in my Trader Joe's, which I go to by daily every other day. And um, Daniel, my very good friend, said he couldn't believe it that I hadn't heard of it because he drives past this establishment every single day and he grits his teeth because he's heard that it does have low-income housing and it is available for that. And um, he's got to travel all the way from over here past this place to go to West Hollywood because there is no affordable housing. Please approve this. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Hector Barbosa, and I want to say that um, not only do we need the housing right now, and then the, especially in this emergency that we have right now, but what is very personal to me is that as a previous owner of a uh, who provided house cleaning and party planning and stuff like that. Okay, I saw a lot many of these type of buildings provide not only jobs But also it it, um, it provided the service um, it needed the services that were needed by these people So mu multiply this by hundreds of times. What kind of revenue is it going to bring into the community? What kind of jobs is it going to create the more that you have these people li uh, living in this type of establishment you will need not only like restaurants and all kinds of other services for, uh, you know, that would be necessary, but also it gives a very healthy look and stamina to the community that keeps building and building. And anyone should be in, uh, included in all of this, not just people who have the money, but also the people who are not making, you know, that kind of, um, you know, that kind of money. But thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tom Alcotti. I had some issues with the machine, so that's why I came up as Tom Q. However, I wanted to say that I work for a um, facility called A Million Drops, which actually helps the homeless uh, with different workshops and things as a learning center. Um, on a daily basis, I see how many people come into the center and, and need the help. Uh, so that's why I want to uh, say I'm in favor of the housing that's going that should go up. Um, 
on Sunset and Bronson. Um, like I said, on a daily basis, there's more and more people, about 35,000 or so uh, right now in the city of LA is homeless. So just as, like you said, 12, 15% or so uh, that could be approved would be, like you said, 300 people off the street. And if we can get this approved even into uh, a further, um, uh, a further facilities that we that, that that are available right now, like, as the spaghetti factory was, um, I believe that it would be a better option. Um, so I hope that you guys would vote in favor of this. Thank you, Lorenzo Brown, Jason Balgus, Jim Doon, Richard Wilson, Charles Hancock. Honorable Commission meeters, members, my name is Lorenzo Brown. Um, I'm a community organizer. I believe in this project, support this project full heartedly. Could you please expedite getting this done as far as that goes? I'm one of the people that live in Skid Row, and I'm working now, working myself back into being a productive member of society. I need a place to move when I get out of there. Low income, now that I'm working, may not even go. Uh, for me, as far as that goes, I may make too much money, but I need that moderate level income. This is going to help everybody at every level. Could you please expedite this, do whatever you have to, have your staff look into getting past the boulder dash as far as that goes. We have people in the guise of AHF, AIDS Healthcare Foundation, and the, you know, whatever their committee or organization to save LA, they say they're going to do. This is just a guise for evil as far as that goes, and stopping production and promoting you know, housing in every community. I see them stand up and everywhere we go and fighting against us getting housing. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, my name is Jason Valgus, and I'm for the, uh, this building being opened and put into effect. I think that um, we live in LA, so there's traffic everywhere you go. You say, get over it. This is traffic. You, you keep going and be safe. But affordable housing needs to be affordable for homeless people, especially for some of the elderly people that are out there having problems too. And um, just open it, it's already there. My name is Jim Dunn. I've been a member of this community for 23 years. And I'm encouraging you to please stand behind the members of my community who are looking for work, who are working, they're middle income, low income, they're looking for jobs, they're looking for a place to live. Please, uh, don't penalize my community any longer. Please open the doors, reopen these doors. Thank you. Hi, my name is Richard Wilson and I'm for this pro uh, project. Um, I see no reason in not having this project move forward because if there's a vacant building and there's a chance that we can prevent people from being homeless, uh, I don't really think that homelessness uh, benefits anybody. So, thank you. Dorian Stokes, Dominique Bonanno, someone named Juan Howard or Yuan Howard. Good afternoon. I'm Dominic Bonanno. Um, you know, just a little background. You know, the old spaghetti factory was there since 1924, and it was pretty much sent to its death in 2012. This project has 40,000 square feet of creative office spaces, and it has been sitting vacant for multiple years. I've gone by it a million times, and it breaks my heart because I used to go there as a child. Um, the thing about that, that the, there is 17,000 square feet um, as far as parks, and yet it is the most deprived park part of the city. Um, and I just hope that you guys also understand, or that the city understands, homeless is not an option. People in LA County are one step away. Each paycheck they get, they're one step away from being homeless. That is not acceptable. So please approve this project. Thank you for listening. Have a good afternoon. Good afternoon, my name is Darian Stokes. I approve this project. Um, I live downtown and as all of you see the housing crisis, when you drive here, you're downtown, I'm sure you guys see all of the homeless people and um, 
I'm really just here to say, if you could just have compassion, if it's in your ability to make a difference, then I, I really believe that that's something that we should all do. This building has been vacant for four years, and there's been, there's just so many people out here that, that I, I, I also serve downtown and feed some of the homeless or pray for the homeless, and a lot of them, they have jobs, they just really can't afford it. I mean, I, am a, um, I have my own business, and I mean, when I, I just, I work really hard in my business, and I can't imagine if I had a slow month, you know, what would happen, because we do live in one of the most expensive states in the United States. So if we have the ability to, to do so, I just ask that we can have compassion. Thank you. So thank you. Joan Howard. I do outreach for Food on Foot in Hollywood, and I've lived and worked there for many, many years. I'm asking that you please let this project go forward. I actually had, we ate, I used to be an audience coordinator, we ate many times at the, at the spaghetti factory, and I would ask that you be very, very careful about what you preserve. We can only preserve a few buildings. We don't need to preserve things that frankly look like a bad movie set. I see the pain every day in the street, and it's making me sick. And I don't care whether it's low income, affordable, or just housing. Everybody needs housing. How much less density would you have if the firemen two blocks away could live in their own neighborhood? They wouldn't have to go 100 miles a day to come in to work. And as for the low income, they don't, take, they don't use cars. They take public transportation. Please, housing is needed, and the pain in the street Let's preserve lives so we don't have to build a monument to skeletons. Thank you. Mary Sadaro, Nyla Arcelanian, and Wayne from Encino. Hi, I'm Mary Sadaro, and I just got housing. I've been on the streets for a year. I was displaced three years ago. I got sick. And I'm one of the people that is affected by this, and we need affordable housing. We need to help the people. They're not all drug addicts. They're not all alcoholics. Some of us are losing our things because of health or whether it be jobs. Um, but we really need these projects to get pushed through. And like she just said, some of these buildings are not that historic. And we are putting money in places. We need to be putting money in other places. I did real estate for 10 years. And I really feel as though it's time for us to start working together instead of trying to separate us. Because we're not separate. We're together in this. And I really pray that this project goes through and many others after it. Because we need this terribly. Thank you. Council members, my name is Nyla Arslanian. I'm editor of Discover Hollywood Magazine and president emeritus of the Hollywood Arts Council. And I was there at the beginning, 10 years ago, when this project was uh, introduced to the community and a coalition of community groups, and we were extremely in favor, particularly of the park. Today, our issue is about housing. But this was a good project 10 years ago when it was first approved. It's now a better project. I urge your support so we can get this thing done and finished once and for all and provide the housing that's needed in our community. Thank you. Thanks so much. Please start the clock. Jose Weezer's brother, Marquis Weezer Dawson, in the Gotta house. Gotta stay on the topic. That's right. So thank you, Mr. Weezer number two, for starting my clock illegally before, with my learning disability, finding the microphone, foo. So, again, there's that little man, Englander. He walk his ass out. Good job. So what we got here today, foo? More corruption. Look at all these papers. What are all them papers? The only papers I want to see is a wad of $100 bills. I want the money. Marquise Weezard Dawson want the money. Mitchell Boomenfield want the money. Finally, fuck Mitchell Englander. And I'm glad he's retired. Oh, 
Do I get All right, a, that's that's your time. Do I get my general? That is your time. But, but you I missed my... general public comment. Please no. don't disrupt the meeting anymore. You get it at the end. You Please sit it. down. You changed it too to the end? You're disrupting the meeting. Please yeah. sit down. Okay, there, That's Mr. your last warning. Okay, you continue Mr. to disrupt Weezar. the meeting. You will be asked to leave. Okay, Mr. Weezar Dawson. Okay, there you go there. Weezar Dawson. All right, that concludes public comment on items number four and five. Um, I, uh, well, yeah, good. Mr. Englander is still with us. We'll move that we deny the appeal and sustain the action of the City Planning Commission in certifying the supplemental EIR and approving the tentative map with the technical corrections requested by planning staff in a letter dated November 5, 2018. Uh, and an item number five will deny the appeal and sustain the action of the City Planning Commission finding that the project was assessed in the EIR, errata, addendum, and supplemental ER, recommending approval of the zone and height district change in the general plan amendment and approving conditional use on menu incentives and site plan review with technical corrections requested by the planning staff in the letter dated November 5. Hearing no objection, that'll be the order. Uh, we will go uh, now to item number seven. All right, we have a very exciting presentation on this matter. We're exchanging binders from the table. Good afternoon, Council Committee members, Ruben Caldwell from the Department of City Planning. Uh, the item before you today consists of the two implementing ordinances necessary to effectuate the South Los Angeles Community Plan Update. Included for your consideration is the Zone and Height District Change Ordinance, applying zoning throughout the plan area, as well as the Community Plan Implementation Overlay District, or CPIO, further refining zoning for specific geographies consistent with the goals and policies of the community plan. Now previously, as part of your November 21st, 2017 recommendation for City Council to adopt the South Los Angeles Community Plan update, this committee requested the City Attorney to prepare and present an ordinance with amendments establishing the South LA CBIO District. It should be noted that the Zone and Height District Change Ordinance was held in committee so it could be considered with the final CPIO ordinance once complete. Now, the City Council then adopted the Community Plan's General Plan Amendments and certified its EIR the following day on November 22, 2017, and the General Plan and appropriate maps have been updated in accordance with Council's action. Now, with the necessary form and legality review now complete, the Planning Department recommends that this committee consider advancing the CPIO and Zone Change Ordinances to the City Council and Mayor for consideration and adoption. Uh, this will allow the components, all components of the community plan update to become effective, including the general plan amendments adopted a year ago. Now, because the city remains in the midst of a housing crisis, further delay in effectuating these ordinances harms the city's efforts to increase the construction of new housing and to create new jobs that will serve both current and future generations in the plan area. Furthermore, the continued processing of demolition permits in key neighborhood conservation areas is resulting in the loss of irreplaceable, historically significant residential structures in the South Los Angeles Community Plan area. Therefore, an urgency clause has been included with each ordinance to allow its immediate use upon publication pursuant to Charter Section 253. Finally, um, your November 2017 recommendation also instructed the Planning Department to report back on zoning and land use for religious institutions in the plan area. As instructed, the Department initiated a follow-up study in coordination with Council Districts 8 and 9 and leaders of the faith community, and, and the Department has prepared and transmitted its report to this committee. So in closing, on behalf of the Department of City Planning and the South Los Angeles Community Planning Unit, 
I would like to once again thank the numerous community residents and stakeholder organizations, the council offices and city department staff who have participated in the development and completion of this plan and its ordinances. In particular, I would like to thank the office of the city attorney for their expert review and preparation of the final CPIO, and in particular, Parrish Knox, John Fox, Kathy Phelan, Adrian Corsani, and others for their continued commitment in assisting the department in preparing and moving forward its numerous, often complex, planning initiatives. Thank you, and that concludes the department summary on this item. Thank you so much, Mr. Caldwell. Uh, we appreciate your presentation. We've got a number of public comment cards uh, on item number seven. No, I'll begin. Uh, you as quickly as we can get through these, the better it will be for everyone. Uh, Jonathan Jager, Orinio Openaldo, Rabia Sen, Jasmine Johnson, Mariana Huerta Jones. Good afternoon. Jonathan Jager from the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles. I'm here on behalf of the Unidad Coalition. The community plans have been a big victory for the community. We're glad that the CPIO is finally being adopted so we can get to work together implementing the community plan policies, especially as related to affordable housing. The community plans include a plan to create an inventory of existing units and adopt a no net loss policy for affordable units in the plan areas. A robust inventory that captures all affordable units is necessary since we currently have no way of measuring how many units have been lost. We're glad we can start working on this policy now. The community plans also contemplate a right of return policy for displaced residents. We work daily with residents displaced from rent-stabilized housing and need protections for them to remain in their communities. We're excited to start working on implementing these and other policies contained within the community plans. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings. I, Irene Pinaldo, a member of SAGE, lived and served the community for 78 years. I'm here to update what I experience in the community now. At the church and school I attended, the laity has reduced, and at graduation, there were 10 students graduating, where before there were 45, due to rent increases, evictions, creating homelessness and displacement. I shopped through the community to keep money there, but as I shopped this fall season, businesses were gone, or the surviving business had to change products sold. I had to hunt for products in other stores. We of Unidad worked 10 years to create a plan of, by, and for the people. And now we expect to live what we want now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman and Plum Committee members. Uh, my name is Jasmine Johnson, and I'm a South LA resident and a uh, program associate at PSRLA. Um, and I just want to thank you all for hearing the, both plans today and urge you to pass both um, items 7 and 8. Um, I'm excited to finally be at this point and after nearly a decade of organizing and um, community visioning and anticipating this implementation. And we're eager to work with our city partners in order to, to make sure that um, this hard work is actually implemented. Um, but unfortunately, the community's waited far too long for these um, for the CPIOs to be implemented. And with this year-long delay, um, we've delayed important environmental protections for vulnerable populations, such as children and the elderly. And we've also um, prolonged unmitigated exposures to the more than 1,300 hazardous uses in the Southeast and um, South LA community plan areas. So a lot of community work has gone into this and I'm excited to um, hopefully be able to work with ombudsman and um, council members to see that this is implemented. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Mariana and I'm with the Alliance for Community Transit Los Angeles. I'd like to strongly encourage you to pass both items number seven and eight. Today, after over 10 years of visioning and organizing, the South LA and Southeast LA communities are ready for the implementation of their new community plans and begin to see critically needed affordable housing production as well as support for local and family sustaining jobs and community serving small businesses. Because of the lack of an, adop of an adopted CPIO, the communities have lost dozens of opportunities for affordable housing units and have experienced rent, rent increases and have been displaced or um, become homeless. So implementation of the CPIOs must happen swiftly. With the passage of CPIOs today and hopefully in the full council tomorrow, we have an opportunity to stop families from being displaced or becoming ho homeless. So we look forward to working with you on implementation. Thank you. Thank you. After Ms. Sin, we have Sharif Franklin, Fabian Gonza, Maria Patino, Aiden 
Barut. Good afternoon. Um, 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 I'm Rabia Sen with Esperanza Community Housing, and we are a proud member of the Unidad Coalition. Thank you for hearing this item as well as the next one. It's been 10 years, almost 10 years of organizing and, and thousands of hours of the community working on this visioning document, the People's Plan, that, that you um, adopted most of in, into the community plans. We can't wait any longer. We can, no long, we, we can no longer hold off the vote. So thank you again for holding this today. Um, we look forward to partnering with you to implement the People's Plan as soon as possible so that we can ensure that all development and investment in the South and Southeast LA areas will happen in a way that preserves and produces critically needed affordable housing, that prevents the serial displacement of community residents, that protects their health as well as the environmental health, and that protects and creates well-paying jobs and small businesses. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Fabian Gonzalez. I work with SAGE. We're a nonprofit organization around tenant rights, healthy housing, and equitable development, and we strongly encourage you to pass items uh, seven and eight. As you know, the, the, uh, there's a housing crisis, and this, the rents are still too damn high, and this has taken really, really long to pass. And uh, uh, we specifically want to focus on the right of return. There's been a lot of development in South Central LA, and we want to continue to support community residents to stay in our neighborhood and uh, uh, to continue to live a uh, very healthy and uh, fruitful uh, place to live for their kids. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Maria Patino Gutierrez, and I'm also with the I'm with Sage and the Unidad Coalition. Tell me your name again. Maria Patino. Okay. And I'm with the Unidad Coalition as well, and we help um, implement the People's Plan. Well, we're looking forward to the actual implementation, and I'm here specifically to, to talk about the jobs. I'm Jobs Coordinator for SAGE. And um, the, the new South and Southeast LA Community Plans have a number of policies and programs that aim at increasing these job opportunities, and we urge the committee to implement this today to begin the process um, to implement this in the community plan. So we've seen a lot of new developments be um, passing through the pipeline, and these are a lot of jobs that are we're missing out on this opportunity. So we urge you to pass um, items seven and eight today. Please, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Cherie Franklin, Urban Design Center, and thank you for moving these plans forward. And I wanted to give a shout out to Ruben. Uh, he's held so many meetings over the, I don't know how many years, but. Um, this plan gives us a chance to really start to planning and implementing uh, visions from the community and looking at financing and ways to partner with the city to raise dollars. Uh, we're also doing uh, work in the Southeast Community Plan uh, and working, as you know, in the Lamert Park Village, also in Central Avenue Historic District, and with uh, family members such as Hamid Razapur, who is here looking at how do we um, enhance our projects by taking some of these M zone properties and adding affordable housing and quality housing in the airspace uh, above manufacturing and other commercial uses. So I commend the efforts to do that. But I, I also want to say that we need to make this not a product that's on the shelf. Let's put into action and let's go get some money and make things happen in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, Lizette Hernandez, Joe Donlin, Cynthia Strathman, Strathman, I think that is, Jordan Barrett Kim. Hi, my name is Aiden Akbarut. I work for a uh, affordable housing builder. We, um, we, we build all across the spectrum of affordable housing from workforce to moderate, all the way uh, down to low and very low. Um, we depend, and, and I also want to compliment Mr. Caldwell on the CPIO. Uh, the only thing, the only concern that, that I have is that <laughs> that we preserve the densities that were provided for in TOC and PSH, the transit-oriented community, and the permanent supportive housing uh, ordinance in the commercial corridors. You know, in the commercial corridors, is very very important to maintain that density that we that that we were afforded with those uh, with those new provisions and um, and I'm not sure where where the where the, the new plan stands on that I just wanted to voice my support for the new plan and also uh, request that that be looked at thank you thank you hi good afternoon my name is Lizette Hernandez I'm the director of environment and health programs at PSRLA 
Physicians for Social Responsibility. I'm also a resident of South LA, a single mother, re recently displaced by gentrifying predators in the South LA uh, plan area. Uh, and so I'm speaking, um, you know, just in support of the CPIO. I think that it is long overdue. Uh, I've been testifying before the plum for close to 20 years on environmental justice and gentrification issues. And it is time for us to hold gatekeepers accountable and make sure that we have champions for environmental justice and gentrification and against gentrification. We need you to step up. We need you to expedite these measures. Our communities have been long patient. We have um, African American families um, that are also losing their homes that have been in the community for 50, 60 years. And, uh, and it's a disgrace, you know. So while I am somewhat optimistic, I also know that this is a powerful moment for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cynthia Strathman from Strategic Actions for a Just Economy and the United Neighbors in Defense Against Displacement Coalition. Um, we have worked with the UNIDAD Coalition for 10 years on the People's Plan um, with hundreds of local residents to include equity provisions in the community plans and these CPIOs and many of the elements that we had advocated for are now in them. So we're here today to thank you, the council, for putting these up for a vote before the holidays, which um, we very much appreciate. Also the mayor's office for their leadership on this and the planning department, which I knew worked so hard on this and has won, I think, a couple of awards for it and it is very much deserved. Um, can everybody who's here to support the People's Plan please stand up? That's CD Tech, Esperanza Community Housing, Legal Aid Foundation Los Angeles, Positions for Social Responsibility, Public Council, and the Alliance for Community Transit, and we all really appreciate all of your hard work. And this is the last time you will see me today, so you also have that to be thankful <laughs> you for. You sure? Thank you. <laughs> thank I'm sure. You, thank you. Good afternoon. Joe Donlin, uh, also with SAGE and the United Neighbors in Defense Against Displacement. Um, Again, strongly support the South and Southeast LA community plans um, because the city and, and all of the leaders here today have included 80% of the com community proposals that were a part of our People's Plan campaign, um, which included anti-displacement provisions, um, affordable housing incentives, strong environmental justice provisions, enhancement for parks and green space, local jobs provisions, and protections against predatory lending facilities. Now several key pieces really include and require a lot of attention for implementation and our coalition of residents um, and community organizations, faith-based organizations, small businesses, and others are eager to join with the city partners to um, bring these into full um, implementation. Um, in particular, we really want to see the known at loss and right of return pieces moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have. Um Reverend John Cager, Pastor Brown, Reverend Kelvin Calloway, Chris Jordan, Pastor Cook, Bishop Taylor. And it says that Markel Fultz is here, which would be interesting, uh, given he has he a job out of town. He can join the Lakers, can he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe something's up. <laughs> Let us know what you've uh, learned, Reverend Cager. I'm Reverend John Cager. I am the president of the Los Angeles Council of Religious Leaders, which represents uh, almost 2,000 houses of worship and over 2 million Los Angelinos of faith. A year ago, more than a year ago, 384 days ago, I was here with a group of faith leaders to protest the South and Southeast area plans because they were made without consulting the faith community. We were asked to remove our objection, to trust city planning, and to trust the Plum Committee. We want to thank the planning department, Mr. Bertoni, Mr. Caldwell, because they worked with the faith community, and 72 days ago they presented the Plum Committee uh, with an option that, uh, that allows the faith community to participate in the area plans. We are asking the Plum Committee to live up to its promise as well. Thank you. Kelvin Calloway, Bethel ME Church in Los Angeles, and also a member of the Faith Community Coalition. I'm here in support of uh, the CPIO plan and uh, also to thank uh, my councilman, Councilman Harris Dawson, his office and staff, Councilman Price, and his office and staff, city planning, and all of those who really worked diligently in addressing and responding to the uh, questions and concerns that were raised by the faith-based community 
and uh, to address those in the plan. And we want to just encourage support thereof so we can continue to do the work for which we've called. Thank you so much. Dr. Donald R. Cook II, Pastor Harvest Tabernacle Bible Church in Los Angeles. I'd like to first thank you all for voting for the South and the Southeast CPIL as it regards the for progress for those areas. I'd like to also urge for an additional vote to include all churches, temples, synagogues, and religious institutions to partake in this opportunity as well. It will be ideal for everyone to move forward in unity with collaborative efforts between the city, the media community, and the faith community coalition. Once again, thank you for the South and Southeast vote, but we urge to include all areas of worship. Thank you. Councilman Dawson, members of the council. Uh, my name is James Taylor. I am the pastor of the Heavenly Vision Church in Los Angeles. I'd like to thank you for uh, this vote. I appreciate what you are doing for our community. I only ask further that we would move forward to make sure that this is available for all faith-based organizations. Uh, we serve many people that are homeless, that we are working to help them uh, overcome their homelessness by getting them housing. So your, uh, your vote, your participation, your leadership in this will allow us to seize this opportunity to make true change in our community. So we say thank you. Thank you. Chris Jordan, Executive Director of Grant Housing and Economic Development Corp. Also chairperson who participated with the CPIO for the Southeast Plan. Uh, I'd like to express my thanks to the city staff and those who helped us work on that plan. Also my appreciation that the plan is moving forward to full implementation. I'd like to encourage the committee to advance the corresponding faith-based mapping plan uh, that will help us do more of the work that we're doing with our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I have Benjamin Torres, and uh, I guess Markel Folks is not a real person, so we'll move. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Benjamin Torres. I'm the president and CEO of CD Tech, a racial equity and economic justice organization in South LA, and a member of Unidad. Uh, small mom and pop businesses have been the economic lifeline of South LA for African American and Latinos providing goods and services, jobs, and and, and the ability for families to survive and thrive. We are appreciative of the opportunity to implement the community's 10-year vision and constructing equitable community plans along with the council offices and mayor's office in, and the planning department and implementing uh, community plans that will provide uh, in relation to economic development, help to protect small uh, mom and pop businesses from displacement through outreach engagement and technical assistance resources assist in creating small businesses and entrepreneurial opportunities in new redevelopment projects for African-American and Latino youth and other marginalized populations, and connect people of color-owned businesses from South LA to procurement opportunities tied to these re big redevelopment projects. And we believe this is an example of good collaboration practice between social and economic justice groups and city government. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, and I just want to make sure I call Pastor Wilson. Did I call Pastor Wilson? Reverend Nicolette Birdsong Wilson. I'm the pastor of St. James AME Church in Los Angeles and also a member of the Faith Community Coalition. I'm not going to belabor the point. It's already been said. We're all affirming and we're very happy for all the work that's already been done. Um, I just would like to please impose upon you to no longer delay the vote on the faith-based mapping plan. That's very important also to our communities, to our churches, because we do know the people in our communities and we know the work that needs to be done. So thank you very much. Thanks so much. Uh, Mr. Caldwell, do you uh, have any comments, particularly uh, as it relates to the faith-based piece that we've been working on for so long, and then the transit-oriented uh, communities, provisions that we have uh, at the state, and Measure JJJ and all that? Um, yes. Can you comment yes. on those things in particular and any other items that you see fit to rebut? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Um, maybe I'll address the uh, the uh, TOC provisions first. Sure. Um, so in the corridor sub-areas of the uh, South Los Angeles CPIO, and that would be on page 32 of the ordinance, 
um, it, it clearly states that the, uh, the, the base density is one per 800 square feet of lot area, so the R3 density uh, for market rate projects. But for TOC projects and density bonus projects, uh, that density is one per 400 square feet of lot area, or the R4 density. So it is as the zones would have been in the past. Um, and I hope that addresses the question. Okay. Yeah. And then relative to the faith-based study, um, as you review the report, uh, you know, we certainly look forward to uh, further discussion at a future date. And, um, you know, this was a very comprehensive process. We had two workshops at, um, over the course of last year. Uh, we met with um, numerous faith leaders. And uh, we really did, um, as you see in the mapping in the report, we really did um, determine some patterns of, of, of change that may, should be considered, and those are all outlined in the report. Uh, so we, as I say, we just look forward to the uh, further instruction and further consideration of the report. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, and uh, congratulations to uh, you, Mr. Caldwell. Mr. Uh, Representative from Council District 10. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jordan Baruchim. I'm here from Council District 10, Herb Wesson's office. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak before you today. This plan has been a long time in the making, and we do like to thank all parties for participating and giving their diligence on the matter. Uh, we do have one instruction that we would like to read into the record, and I do have a, a copy to submit to the file. Uh, we would like to instruct the planning department to initiate necessary proceedings to downzone all residentially zoned properties within the South Los Angeles Community Plan, bounded by Western Avenue to the west, I-10 freeway to the south, Normandy Avenue to the east, and Washington Boulevard to the north, to R2-1-HPOZ, to retain consistency with the existing zones in general plan land uses, with the exception of Assessor Parcel, uh, assessor parcel Number 5074-033026, which is Church of Christian Fellowship, and Prepare Associated Zone and Height District Change Ordinance. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, uh, CD10. Uh, so, uh, one, I'd like to thank everybody for the, that's participated in this process, especially you, Mr. Caldwell, um, who spent a lot of time uh, holding community meetings, listening, and hearing folks out. I want to thank our faith leaders for raising uh, the matter of church property and, and faith community property throughout the community and lifting how that needs to be looked at differently and having a fully uh, cook plan over a long period of time. And then the uh, activists uh, who put forward and pressed for and demanded the people's plan, uh, which largely informs what we have in front of us today. Uh, that is a, an amazing uh, organizing feat over a long period of time. Uh, as someone who spent some time doing organizing, it's very, very difficult and a, and a tremendous accomplishment to involve uh, everyday people over a long period of time of over in such technical matters, uh, no matter how consequential uh, they are. And so thank you and congratulations uh, to all of you. Uh, any questions or comments, Mr. Blumenfeld? No questions or comments from Mr. Uh, Blumenfeld. So uh, we'll move to um, include um, the instruction offered by Council District 10. All right, and then um, we will recommend adoption of uh, the accompanying ordinance amending section 12.04 of the Los Angeles Municipal Code. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. Could you read the instruction for me, Mr. Mejia? So, so uh, we'll approve the city attorney prepare um, soft LA uh, community plan implementation overlay district, um, and as well as the stone and high district change ordinance. And then we'll uh, also approve the environmental impact report, the statement of overriding considerations, the mitigation monitoring program and related CEQA findings, and also make the following two findings. Uh, define the base of the independent judgment of the decision maker. After consideration of the whole of the administrative record, the project was assessed in the previously certified EIR EMV 2008-1781 EIR, certified on November 22, 2017, and pursuant to sequent guidelines, section 15162 and 15164, no subsequent EIR negative deck or addendum is required for approval of the project and have 
an additional finding to adopt the findings of the director of planning on behalf of the CPC as the findings of the council and in addition to the CD10 uh, request for a zone change and that zone change that will come in the future has no impact on the zone and high district change that is before council tomorrow. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, we will uh, move to adopt this item. Uh, hearing no objection, that'll be the order, and we will move uh, to item number eight. Councilman, uh, there is also an item eight is a uh, report from the planning department as to the zone and high district changes and a city attorney prepare ordinance to establish the Southeast LA Community Plan Implementation Overlay District. Caldwell. Okay, so once again, uh, Ruben Caldwell with the Department of City Planning. So this item, Council File Number 17-1053, consists of the two implementing ordinances necessary to effectuate the Southeast Los Angeles Community Plan Update. Included for your consideration is the Zone and Height District Change Ordinance as well as the CPIO District Ordinance, both effectuating zone changes consistent with the goals and policies of the Community Plan. Now, as part of your November 21st, 2017 recommendation for City Council to adopt the Southeast Los Angeles Community Plan update, this committee requested the City Attorney to prepare an ordinance with amendments establishing the Southeast LA CPIO District and again holding the Zone and High District Ordinance in committee so it could be considered with the final CPIO once complete. The City Council then adopted the Community Plan's general plan amendments and certified its EIR the following day on November 22nd, 2017 and the general plan and appropriate maps have been updated in accordance with council's action. So with the necessary form and legality review now complete, the planning department recommends that this committee move the aforementioned CPIO and zone change ordinances and recommend they be considered for adoption by the city council and mayor. Now, as stated with the previous item, it has been a year since the Southeast Los Angeles community plan was adopted and the city remains in the midst of a housing crisis. Similar to South Los Angeles, to de delay in effectuating the community plan's ordinances harms the city's efforts to increase the construction of new housing and to create new jobs. And therefore, an urgency clause has been included with each ordinance to allow for their immediate effectuation pursuant to Charter Section 253. So once again, uh, please note that as instructed by this committee, the department has issued its report on the land use and zoning for religious institutions in the plan area. And in closing, once again, on behalf of the Department of City Planning, we would like to thank the numerous community members and city representatives who have been a part of this process of this community plan update. And thank you, that concludes our uh, summary of the item. Thank you. Uh, we have a number of uh, comment cards on this. Some folks, uh, many of the folks are folks who spoke uh, on item number seven, so uh, don't you don't feel like you have to speak twice, uh, but I'll begin. Uh, we have uh, Benjamin Torres, Joe Donlin, Lizette Hernandez, Hamid Drazapur, Cynthia Strathman, <laughs> Jasmine Johnson. Good afternoon again, Joe Donlin with SAGE and the Unidad Coalition. Um, Benjamin Torres, CD Tech. And uh, we want to generally cede our time since we did make comments previously, but again, want to thank the leadership of CD9 and CD8, um, the planning department for the work done on the South and Southeast LA community plans, and we look forward to working with you on implementation. Thank you. Excellent. So uh, I have Hamid Razapur. Everybody else that signed up for eight also signed up for seven. Um, so if you want to speak, um, you can do that. But if you want to cede your time, that's fine as well. And of course, Herman, you want to speak. So, Mr. Hamid, you got it. Hi, my name is Hamid Razipur. I represent Razipur Trust. We have over 500 employees in LA County. I support the approval to change of the Amazon for housing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm with uh, RMG Housing once again. I just wanted to, uh, again, thank uh, Mr. Caldwell and the entire planning staff and, uh, and, and thank him for those assurances that, that, uh, that the densities won't be dramatically reduced in the commercial corridors. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever. So today's point and lesson is to determine whether or not 
Jose Weizar. You are off topic. I'm on item eight. That's your first warning. The elected official's not here. I'm talking about the capacity of this city allowing a fat, bald, fat fucking asshole to right. bring the FBI in, in this time, to investigate all Mr. these plum issues sit down. that you white niggers allow to take Sergeant, advantage of the remove? public's monies, the public's Mr. time, Herman. and public interest. Fuck you, Dawson. 42 U.S.C. 1983, you continues to disrupt the meeting as he's being escorted out. Hopefully all of that has been recorded for the record uh, and posterity for when we're in court. Um, <laughs> there was, no, there was um, not much uh, with regard to new public comment, so I don't think there's a need for uh, rebuttals. Mr. Caldwell, if you're okay with that, uh, we'll go ahead uh, to discussion. Uh, if there is any, Mr. Price. Um, I want to... Uh just thank staff for all the effort, staff and the community. This has really been a long time coming. Uh, but Mr. Chair, without objection, I'd like to instruct DCP to allow mixed-use development adjacent to the Ross Snyder Rec Center and Thomas Jefferson High School, prepare and present a zone change and general plan amendment from limited industrial M11CPIO to neighborhood commercial C2 dash one dash CPIO for those industrial zoned properties fronting Compton Avenue between 41st Street and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Thank you, Mr. Price. Uh, so uh, hearing no objection, we'll adopt the, uh, this matter as amended uh, by Mr. Price. And uh, that leaves us with item number six, is that correct? Yes, sir. Again, to state on the record that we're approving the city attorney prepare ordinance uh, establishing the Southeast LA Community Plan. This was a separate item, number seven, so you need to take similar action. Excellent. So I'm recommending such an action. And to also um, approve the environmental impact report, the statement of overriding considerations, the mitigation monitoring program, and related findings and the findings stated by the planning department and their transmittal as to the environmental findings. We'll adopt that in matter. In addition, Mr. Price's prospective zone change request. Yes. Thank you, sir. Are we all set? We're all set. On that. So item number six. Uh, item six, Councilman, this is a city attorney prepare development agreement for the redevelopment of the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza in CD 8 and 10. All right, we have uh, planning staff, Ms. Toy Lee. Hello, the development agreement was um, heard before the Planning Land Use Committee on uh, June 5th, 2018. Uh, the changes um, to the development agreement were requested by Council District 8 and are just um, additional instructions and are minimal. And the changes are not substantial from what was her, um, the changes are not um, substantial from what was heard on June 5th. Excellent. Uh, we have a number of speaker cards uh, on this, uh, but first uh, we'll hear from uh, the representative of Capri Urban Baldwin LLC, Mr. Marcos Valaios. Not quite, Mr. Primo. <laughs> Mr. Valaios, are you going to defer to Mr. Primo? Smart man. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, honorable council members. Uh, I'm Quentin Primo, uh, the chairman and CEO of Capri Investment Group, the owner of Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza, and the applicant for the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza Master Plan. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today as we enter the final stage of a multi-year process for a landmark project that will enrich a vital part of the Crenshaw Corridor. 
The development agreement for the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza master plan is the culmination of a multi-year process for seeking approval to transform an auto center, auto centric shopping center into a model of transit oriented development and a mixed use destination for South Los Angeles. Earlier this year, this committee and the full city council joined the city planning commission in unanimously approving our master plan entitlements, which will bring unprecedented investment to the Crenshaw corridor. We're very proud of the development agreement before you today. This agreement represents a significant set of community benefits, providing millions of dollars for meaningful improvements and services that will bring enormous value to our neighbors. The development agreement commitments are an extension of the community commitments that we have made since acquiring the property in 2006. This has included $70 million of investment to renovate the mall itself, support local businesses with tenant build-outs and improvements, and offer free year-round community programming for children, seniors, and families. Through the development agreement you are considering today, we are committing to support training and workforce development, hiring of local residents, creating nearly 100 new homes dedicated to families, earning low and moderate incomes, and underwriting efforts to preserve, beautify, and ensure the safety of historic resources and neighborhood streets. Providing quality jobs and meaningful job training is an important part of this project. A significant local hire requirement will ensure local residents have priority access to the thousands of construction and operations jobs created by the project. This is very much in line with our values as we are particularly pleased that local hiring has been formalized in the development agreement. Further, the development agreement also invests $2 million in youth workforce development for local residents as well as an on-site job training center. These and other community benefits contained in the development agreement will complement our ongoing commitment to the neighborhood surrounding Baldwin Hills Crenshaw. We would like to thank you for your careful attention to this project. We are also grateful to the thousands of neighbors who have signed petitions and written letters to support the master plan, as well as the block clubs, neighborhood councils, homeowners associations, labor units, unions, and many other community groups who have also expressed their support throughout the entitlement process. We truly cannot wait to move forward and build a beautiful, vibrant, pedestrian-friendly master plan with enormous benefits to the local community. Our team is here and available to answer any questions that you may have. <clears throat> Thank you for your consideration. Thank you so much, Mr. Primo. So we have a number of speaker cards on this matter. Um, <coughs> I have either Janet Mendez or Donna Grayson. It cannot be both. One of you all have you have to pick. Um, Romero Malvel, Keith Adams, Shamari Davis, Kim Williams. Hello, my name is Janet Mendez. I'm here with the Crenshaw Chamber of Commerce, and I submitted a letter, the full letter from Mr. Armin Ross, president of the Crenshaw Chamber of Commerce. And we're here to correct a record. On May 17, 2017, a letter was mailed to you from Mr. Damien Goodman with a request to place a hold on the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza redevelopment plans. One of the signers to this document was Connie Thomas, and her title was listed as Vice President of the Crenshaw Chamber of Commerce. This letter is specifically intended to correct the, the record. Mrs. Thomas is a member of the Crenshaw Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. The position she holds is Vice President of Membership. In her role as a board member, she is not, she is not now, nor has she ever been authorized to speak or sign any document on behalf of the Crenshaw Chamber of Commerce. The only person authorized to speak on behalf of the Chamber is President and CEO Armin D. Ross. With that said, um, we want to say that the Crenshaw Chamber wholeheartedly uh, supports the, um, the development project and Capri, and Capri Urban's um, application. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Shamari Davis. I'm a business rep with IBEW um, Local 11 Electricians Union. And I'm also here speaking on behalf of Ron Miller for LA Orange County Building Trades to really push for our support of this project. Uh, it's been a long time coming, especially for this community. Um, so we're excited to be able to help bring this to fruition and also help to com 
provide some community benefits and some careers for folks living in the area. So please push this forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, honorable councilman members. Uh, my name is Keith Adams, and I provide day-to-day uh, -day operations and food design for Cafe Creole. It's a Creole restaurant located inside the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza. And I'm here today to express my full support for the development agreement that you have before you today. The owners of Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza have been incredibly supportive of Cafe Creole and all the other local businesses at the mall. That is why we're thrilled about the master plan. We're confident it will enrich our community and be great for business. The development agreement before you today is the cherry on top of an amazing project. It provides incredible benefits for the Crenshaw Corridor, including local hiring provisions that will give our community members first priority access to jobs created by the project. The development agreement also includes funds for workforce development, a job training center, and street beautification measures. All of these benefits will provide tremendous value to our community. Please provide. Please approve the ag agreement today. Thank you. Thank uh, you. So Good food, by the way. Oh, we, we recommend the cafe. Good afternoon. I'm Romero Malvo, a resident of Lemurd Park, the community adjacent to the proposed development. I support the development agreement and the actions before you today. Our over the past years, I've witnessed a decline and outright exodus of businesses serving the Crenshaw communities. I believe that this agreement makes the project a catalyst to jumpstart business ownership and job creation throughout the, the com commercial corridors. I also support the agreement as structured because it is privately financed. Public dollars for economic revitalization is far, far less than the need. It is important that businesses and developers view the community as a viable investment opportunity. Through years of community meetings and council hearings, the project vetting has occurred and resulted in a community that a community, um, I'm sorry, resulted in a community and developers win-win. Thank you. We have Ann Beaumont, Natalie Schumann, John Jackson, Sheree Franklin. Oh, I think left. And Nellie Ruiz. Yes, ma'am. Hi. My name is Kim Williams, chairperson of the Crenshaw Manor community, which is adjacent to the uh, mall. I've been a resident for over 40, 40 years. I'm here to express my support for the development before you today. The agreement holds benefits in the community of the Crenshaw Corridor. It includes measures to support our local workforce, including funds for work, youth workforce development and on-site job training. Finally, the agreement includes funding for tree trimming. Street beautification will, will greatly improve our community. The other benefit will, will support the community, allow us to thrive. Please support the development agreement before you today. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name you is are, You are smooth with that. I have to give you your props. <laughs> that, was, that was a cold move right there. All right. <laughs> My name is Ann Beaumont. I only want to note that I submitted a letter today on behalf of Macy's. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Council. My name is John Jackson, and I'm a resident and income property owner in Lamert Park near the mall. I'm here to voice support for the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza Development Agreement that is before you today. This is a generous agreement with many benefits for, for our community. It's a great opportunity for us, and it is certainly something that doesn't come around every day. This agreement prioritizes local residents to be hired for the hundreds of jobs created by the project. It also provides money for job training and workforce development in our community. I really appreciate Baldwin Hills Community Plaza's commitment to helping our local economy and the focus on making sure residents in the, in the community have access to jobs. The agreement also provides funds for tree trimming and community beautification, which will also really improve the community in which we live. And so please, please, please support this incredible package of benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Natalie Schumann, and I'm speaking today on behalf of over 30,000 hospitality workers represented by Unite Here Local 11. 
We are speaking today in support of the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza project. The project will bring much needed permanent jobs to the area and the developer has committed to treating those workers with dignity and respect. We urge the committee to approve the developer agreement today. Thank you. Hi, Cherie Franklin, Urban Design Center. On a personal note, I live less than two minutes walk from the mall and I've been shopping there literally my entire life for 53 years. Um, as you know, I'm the consultant for the um, Mert Park Village, Greater Mert, Mert, the Mert Park Village Crenshaw Corridor Business Improvement District, and the mall has pledged their support of the bid, so thank you. I will be there to pick up our petition. Um, and the additional support will help because you can only collect so many funds with a bid, and additional funds to do business development and help businesses will be, will be great. And I also worked on the Prop 1C project on the Crenshaw Corridor. Again, any money that we can receive to help um, improve our infrastructure is greatly warranted. And I support the economic development. It will spur other projects. We're creating a fund in Lamert Park, and we think by developing the mall, it'll help us develop along the corridor in Crenshaw and bring some of that opportunity zone money into the community. So thank you very much and approve the project. Thank you. We have Omar Galindo, Jordan Greenslate, and Mr. Keith Renty. Good afternoon. My name is Nellie Ruiz, and I was a housekeeper at the JW Marriott Lamarigo for two years. I know firsthand the importance of having a union job. At my hotel, we did not have a union contract. And every day I went to work feeling like I did not have a voice, and I just had to put up with the injustices I faced as a worker. Now I work with Unite Here Local 11 to ensure uh, hotels will, hotel workers will be treated with dignity and respect. On behalf of myself and my fellow 30,000 union members, I urge you to uh, approve the development agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Omar Galindo. I'm here on behalf of Plumbers Local 78. We are here in support of this project. It's 1,000 residential units and a 400-room hotel. This is going to provide a lot of good opportunities for careers for the local hires. So we urge you to please support this, uh, this movement. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. President. No longer. Past president. I termed out. <laughs> um, my name is Keith Renty. I'm a 56-year resident of Baldwin Hills Estates. And I'm here to concur with what so far has been unanimous support for this project. Uh, it's been a long time in the making. Uh, we met with Capri, uh, and they addressed all the community's um, concerns. And we believe it is a project that is long overdue. So with that said, I support it, and we anxiously await its completion. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. John Gonzalez, Danny Stephen, Gus Torres, Tisha Green. Good afternoon. My name is Gus Torres. I'm here on behalf of UA Local 250 Pipe Fitters and our 5,000 members. And we're also part of the building trades. And we're here in support of this project not only because of all the jobs that it's going to create while it's being built, but after. So we urge you to approve it, please. Thank, Thank you, you for your time, and God bless. Uh, good afternoon. I'm John Gonzalez, Vice President of the Baldwin Hills Estates Homeowners Association. The project before you was the product of years of community meetings at which Capri has listened to the local issues and concerns and made compromise. We believe the current proposal strikes a balance between viability and what our community really wants, including significant community benefits. Unlike most area projects, this is not an all residential project. It provides public and community spaces and substantial commercial use. This provides the overall area with not just patronage opportunities, which we lack, but will also provide employment, tax base, and infrastructure via capital investment, which South LA has struggled to attract. The project includes a reasonable amount of affordable housing and no residential units will be demolished. Indirect displacement may concern some, but that concern cannot halt our area's investment and modernization and is balanced by this development agreement. 
On behalf of the Baldwin Hills Estates HOA, we encourage you to approve this project and where possible to allocate benefits locally. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Tisha Green and I too am from the Baldwin Hills Estates Homeowners Association. Um, we are here, as you have heard from my um, uh, two other homeowners, uh, that we are here to support this project and the um, items before you today. Uh, we really do appreciate, we look forward to the community investment, we look forward to all of the economic development and um, the mixed use and a lot of the resources that our community has long awaited for. And we really appreciate the collaboration from Capri and um, in uh, negotiating and working out issues with our community. And so we strongly support. Thank you so much. All right, uh, there wasn't, there was a lot of support for this project, uh, so congratulations to uh, the Capri Partners Group. Uh, I don't think there's any need for rebuttal. Uh, Mr. If, Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Price. I just, I just want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, congratulate you on your efforts uh, shepherding this project through also with Capri, uh, the community stakeholders that have been involved, as has been said, for, for many, many years. Uh, this is an exciting project. In fact, uh, my initial retail experience was at the Broadway department store back in the day. Uh, and so I got a question, Mr. Chairman. Are we tearing down the Broadway side or the May Company side? Just curious. Oh, neither. Are both the buildings are going to remain? Excellent. It's going to be all the way live. That's what I call adaptive reuse. That, yeah. There you go. There you go. So you were just there on Saturday. Did just you there go on shopping Saturday. Saturday? Just there on Saturday. So anyway, congratulations, and uh, I look forward to the to the development. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, if there are no other uh, comments, I thank you, Mr. Uh, Price. Uh, I want to th uh, thank planning staff, uh, the Council District 8 staff, the uh, Baldwin Hills Estates uh, Homeowners Association, uh, Capri Partners. Um, I think our, um, our local hero, Jason Lombard, who's uh, been having community meetings on this. <laughs> um, uh, for over a decade, I think it is, um, I've been getting calls from Jason to come to community meetings long before I was on the city council, uh, and they've been diligent, um, and they've uh, been significant follow through, and so uh, we thank everybody involved in uh, the project, and uh, we will, I will ask uh, my colleagues um, to recommend to the city council that we approve the de development agreement as presented by the city attorney. Without objection, that'll be the order. That leaves us with item number one, I believe, Mr. Mejia. Actually, item nine, Councilman, if we change. Nine? Yes. All right. Nine's crossed off on my tablet, but I'll take your word for it. Okay. I'll believe you over the tablet. <laughs> so, all right, item number nine. Coffee Bean uh, Shop in CD10. Um, good afternoon, uh, Council Members. Oh, Judge yes, Peace Department of City Planning. Uh, the case before you is the construction, use, and maintenance of an approximately 218,778 square foot corporate office, manufacturing warehouse, and retail facility for the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf in Council District 10. Uh, staff's available if you have any questions. All right, uh, we have no. Uh, Public speakers on item number nine. Is there a comment from Council District 10? Council District 10 supports it uh, from the backfield. Uh, if there isn't uh, any discussions, we'll just say congratulations to Council District 10 and to uh, Coffee Bean, and I'll move that we adopt this order without objection. All right, that leaves us with item number one. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, uh, Chair Harris Thompson, members of the committee. Uh, Vince Fraternity, Director of Planning. Just real quick, uh, a recent meeting, our City Planning Commission um, had been reviewing the accessory dwelling unit ordinance that's been proposed by the City Council that was had been referred back from um, Plum to the City Planning Commission to study some items, including um, uh, the issue of tiny homes. Um, the ordinance in its entirety was referred back to the City Planning Commission, so they've uh, they finished the review. Uh, we forwarded it to 
uh, we'll be forwarding it to the city clerk um, by the end of the year, so we'll be before you at the beginning of the year. The, the big area of contention at City Planning Commission had to do with accessory dwelling units in hillside areas. Um, there's a lot of discussion about the tiny homes um, from, from the tiny home advocates, but really in terms of a lot of the other discussions regarding hillside areas. Um, and so there's the city council originally proposed, uh, um, I think was originally looking at a ban in, a, in the entire hillside areas. The um, city planning commission recommended a much narrower um, ban on, on um, in the hillside areas. Um, we as staff gave them lots of different options. So we actually went um, two rounds of options for them. I don't remember how many options we gave them total, probably about at least six options for ban in the hillside areas. So we gave them lots of different scenarios. Um, they chose a scenario which had to do with um, um, banning them just on those areas that had very specific overlays that had to do with um, impacts to construction because of narrow streets and, and, and the way the streets were configured and narrow um, and to align with the rest of the hillside areas. But that was just the major area that they had a conversation about. Really the rest was fairly straightforward. Um, so you will hopefully be um, seeing that early next year. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rotoni. There are, there are nine people signed up to speak in response to your report, um, but I don't see any of them in the chamber, so we will uh, move that we uh, adopt the report uh, and adjourn uh, this meeting. Thank you so much.